We are at 18.1 million cases of COVID-19 in this country with 320,000 deaths. My question to you is, why are these cases ravaging across the country right now? Why can we really curb this disease as we're speaking? So Aditi, we are in the final stages of this pandemic. We are in the home stretch. Hmm. People are so relaxed now because they are thinking the vaccine is here and they are all protected because they will get the vaccine. However, we have a long way to go before everyone else is vaccinated. So we still need to do the public health recommendations. We need to follow the guidelines from the public, public health officials, make sure we are safe right now between now and March, April timeframe. And, and, and right now we just need to follow that social distancing guidelines, wearing the face mask, uh, avoid public places. Those steps are still required right now. It's only about uh, 600,000 people vaccinated in this country. Mm. We have a long, long way to go. And if we, if we don't do that, I, I suspect we will have many, many more deaths between now and April. Yeah, it's yeah, quite, quite uh, a, sober a sober number that keeps on coming in. I want to ask you a little bit more about these ravaging cases before we go into the vaccine, because I have a lot of questions on that, too. Should we uh, in New York, which was the epicenter earlier this year, be worried about these ravaging cases? Could we become the epicenter again? Fortunately, uh, all, all the metropolitan cities are, are at high risk. Uh, we need to take all the precautions right now to avoid that surge we had back in April and May. Mm-hmm. And, and New York is the prime example of that. We should take all the precautions right now. Like, like the new, new virus strain, mutated virus strain happening in UK and other countries, I think we need to take some precautions right now. Yes, for, yeah, sure. for sure. What is what? the... What would you say has been the impact of nine months of COVID-19 treatments on the healthcare workers who are now getting the vaccine? I think uh, they are relieved right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, The healthcare workers, uh, they think themselves as blessed right now because I think they are now a little more confident that they will not catch the virus. Uh, and they, they will be more confident in, in treating the patients. They will not have that fear. And I think all the healthcare workers should take their vaccine as soon as it's become available, all the frontline workers next. And I think if, if we do that in a systematic manner, I think we, we have definitely the light at the end of the tunnel coming for sure. And in terms of uh, just looking at the hospital needs, doctor, do we have enough PPE supplies, uh, ventilators and beds right now? I know certain areas of the country are at capacity in their hospitals. What insight could you give us on that? So ICU beds are, are, uh, are at, at uh, definitely a problem in, in few states. Uh, mm-hmm. ICU beds are scarcity uh, in many states right now. And I think uh, as far as the PPE goes, we do have enough PPEs. We do have enough supplies. We are more prepared than before. But like what happened during Thanksgiving holidays, a lot of cases happened because of the travel during the Thanksgiving. Same thing will happen again if people continue to travel during the Christmas time and we will have some scarcity of the bed as well as some supplies. Yeah, you you know, I ask you this about the holiday season especially. We're looking at 3,000 deaths a day right now on an average. Could you explain to us how bad could it get if everybody gathers around for holidays like we always do and doesn't follow the CDC guidelines? A second wave just like happened after the Thanksgiving holiday happening again after the Christmas holidays two weeks later, sometime by 10th, 15th of January. I I sincerely, sincerely urge people to cancel their plans of travel cancel their plan of getting together in holiday parties, even if the small family gatherings, indoor gatherings, they should avoid, if at all possible, uh, to avoid the complicated uh, nature of this COVID-19 cases. Uh, I think uh, we will have a reality check probably within two weeks after the uh, the Christmas holiday. So um, what's your prediction for the next couple of weeks, especially going into January? Will we reach 20 million cases? We are already at 18.1. Uh, 
20 million cases and I, I suspect we will have close to 100,000 more deaths between now and end of March wow. within the next three months. Uh, if we don't take the precautions right now and follow the guidelines of the public health, I think we will have uh, uh, some sombering number coming up uh, by end of March. You know, Dr. Patel, just to again assert this more and raise awareness, could you tell us why is it so important for us to wear a mask right now? How crucial is this to curbing the disease? So mask is the only effective way to reduce the spread. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and not only the mask, mask does not protect you fully, but social, social distancing, keep yourself six feet away from other people. This is a droplet spread. So if you come into contact with someone who is close to six feet and cough or sneeze and touch the surfaces, you will definitely get that COVID-19 uh, in your system. So you want to avoid the public places if it, if it all possible. Also, if you are in the public places, you, went, you want to wear the mask. Mass is very, very effective and it's a must. And, and uh, other thing like we have been telling people, wash your hands, avoid public places, don't do indoor gatherings. All those things are very, very crucial at this point uh, within next coming three to four months. You know, parts of the nation are going into uh, lockdown situations. We are hearing, you know, in the state of California, there are big restrictions right now just to curb the disease. Um, do you think we will have an issue of a shutdown in the next two months because of these holiday gatherings, because of this travel, because of people not adhering to CDC guidelines. What's your opinion? Don't need to have the shutdown, but I think people need to take this very, very seriously and sincerely. Uh, avoid the public gatherings, avoid travel if at all possible. Uh, Keep, keep the, uh, the family gatherings just for the immediate family. Yeah. Avoid indoor gatherings if at all possible. Keep safe social distance, wear masks. If we all do that, we don't have to shut down. We know how, how to tackle this, this COVID-19 pandemic, how to manage the pandemic, and we don't have to shut anything down. But if, if we reach that point, just like we had back in, in March and April, we may have to shut down uh, depending on how we do it during this Christmas holidays. Yeah, for sure. for sure. Hopefully we don't come to that that level it was very devastating to see what the impact of a shutdown was in the country let's now dig into the biggest news of this week obviously which is the vaccines my first question to you is um you know now we have the moderna vaccine we were before having pfizer BioNTech vaccine how are you comparing the two vaccines today dr anthony fauci uh, received the first dose of his moderna vaccine and uh, you know we have seen other officials and doctors and nurses across the country get their first dose of the pfizer vaccine how are you looking at those two my recommendation for the vaccine both vaccines are effectively similarly effective as whatever vaccine you have the access first, you should get it. There is no differentiating point of uh, Pfizer vaccine or Moderna vaccine. There is no preference in the medical opinion. So whichever vaccine is available because not all states are getting the Pfizer vaccines first or the Moderna vaccine first. So whatever the access state has and the health officials has the access, you should get that vaccine and don't wait for the, the company or, or other vaccines uh, come later. So my, my recommendation is to take the vaccine as soon as it is available. It doesn't matter what vaccine is coming first to you. Dr. Patel, could you explain the mRNA technology that has been used in both the vaccines? You know, some people think that uh, the vaccine injects COVID-19 virus into your body. I would like for you to clarify that for our audience. A virus genetic code. It's like an electronic system uh, of a computer or, or a, or a uh, TV. It, it codes the spike protein, which is purified. So it's not a live virus. And, and it's purified and injected into the body, which produce spike protein and, and, and makes a gene, genetic vaccine, which don't alter your genes. So if people has this misunderstanding that we, you are getting this, this virus genetic code into your system. It is not, it is a cutting edge technology. Its immune system produces the antibody from that genetic code. It is not the virus itself, it's a killed virus. So you don't have to worry about that 
going into your system that you will get that virus into your system. Dr. Patel, when talking about this vaccine, I want to talk to you about the participants. A, do you think there were enough participants for both the vaccines? And B, there were a few people that were excluded from the trial, such as pregnant women or children under the age of 16. So what does it mean for those people that were not even in the trials? Pregnant females, as well as some immunosuppressed individuals, the uh, FDA, CDC, NIH, they are doing some trials now, uh, which will bring probably some good results probably by end of January, early, early uh, February. Uh, earlier stage, they were not included because I think we needed to approve the vaccine quickly. And answering to your questions, we had between 45 and 60,000 people in, right. in phase three trial, and that is sufficient enough. Any any number between 30 and 40,000 uh, are good enough to, to develop the efficacy and, and uh, safety uh, aspect. Yes, definitely. You know, when we're talking about the vaccine, um, and I would, I would come to the one in, in the UK as well very soon, kids, uh, we're trying to get kids back in school. Uh, that is a huge agenda of, you know, the incoming administration as well. Um, but the kids under the age of 16 have not even been included in the trials. Would kids be getting this, this vaccine, these doses of Moderna or Pfizer? And, um, you know, how, how is that going to take place? is for the kids under 16 and like other categories I mentioned mm -hmm. uh, that may take up to two three months once that is uh, developed and, and, and safety is established then kids can get the vaccine however the good news the kids don't get this this uh, disease too quickly so uh, as long as the the teachers and and the other staff are, are fully immunized and, and kids take the precautions uh, if, if we have to go back to the school uh, in a couple of months. I think that should be a good, good strategy to start the school at that point. Definitely. You know, I have more questions on the vaccine, Dr. Patel. Uh, there are two doses of this vaccine. I'd like to know why. And I'd also like to know what you think uh, on how long the immunity with these vaccines would last. So as long as, uh, as far as the immunity goes, no one knows. We, we suspect it, it probably will give a good lifelong immunity, but it's too early to say. Uh, it, it probably it's going to be a long-term immunity right now uh, in, in my uh, medical expertise, I can tell you, but it, it's too early to say that it will give the full immunity for lifetime. Uh, it, it may give immunity for a year, two years, and we may need uh, another vaccine like we used to get for the uh, influenza. So uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's too early to say if this vaccine will give lifelong protection like measles or other viral disease. Uh, Definitely. And why is there two doses of this vaccine? The mRNA technology uh, with this quicker studies of this vaccine, the trials, the clinical trials required this vaccine to be in two doses number one because <clears throat> the the vaccine itself will not give enough antibody in the first dose so it, it gives about 40 percent 50 percent immunity in, in one dose so uh, the, the reason for the two dose instead of waiting too long for the studies they develop this vaccine in two doses to to ensure that the the uh, immunity goes up to 90 percent 95 percent so that is the whole reason so if people take dose of one vaccine they will not be fully protected they will be protected maybe 40 percent 50 percent of the time some people may just need one dose but right now the study says that if you take two dose you will get 95 percent protection should an individual who has had COVID-19 this year get the vaccine according to you? Who did get the, the COVID-19 this year, they must take the vaccine because the protection from the disease itself is not proven. We don't know how long that protection is, is one month, two months or six months. So people uh, who were, and, and I think those people who had the disease will be at the 
more chance of getting the disease so i think people should take the vaccine as soon as it's become available to them so it doesn't matter if they had a covid 19 or not could covid 19 still be transmitted even if you take the vaccine because we don't know hmm. a very good question we don't know how long you will get the immunity when you will get the immunity if you get the full immunity or not so it may take a week it may take two weeks it may take a month so uh, you must continue to wear the mask once you get the vaccine you still need to continue those public health guidelines follow follow all the guidelines as recommended even af after you get the vaccine you know when you're looking at these vaccine and the fact that it's been now you know given to healthcare workers they are receiving it you know people in the uk are also receiving this vaccine my question to you on that sense would be when you're looking at the at the path moving forward and uh, you know the distribution of vaccine and much more what do you think needs to be the focus in distribution of the vaccine and do we have enough to vaccinate all of america by end of december we will have 20 million doses by end of january we will have additional 30 million doses by end of february we will have 50, 50 million doses around march time frame total doses we will have is 100 million so it's only 50 million people will be covered by end of march so we do not have enough enough vaccines available right now hopefully with these two uh, pfizer and moderna's production line going very rapidly we may see change that picture in in few weeks up to a month or so uh, and, and that is the whole reason there are three different phases of vaccination a guideline given from the cdc phase 1a for the healthcare workers mm -hmm. long-term care facilities phase 1b is for the people over 75 and older and certain frontline healthcare workers or essential workers and then phase 1c age 65 and 74 years old and 16 to 64 with high risk medical conditions and some other essential workers so we have to break this down into categories of, of phases uh, phased vaccination program because we don't have enough supplies right now and when you're looking at this process of uh, all these vaccines that are coming in, um, if I was to ask you, what is your biggest fear in the situation? Or what could be the worst case scenario, even with the vaccines? What would you say? Uh, we have to, uh, I know we are in the advanced technology uh, phase right now, but anything could go wrong. Uh, temperature control not properly maintained or some, some bad, uh, those came from from the production line some some kind of contamination happens all those things are very unlikely but it can happen and that can definitely uh, stagger the process okay yeah. you know now yeah. i want to go into talking to you about the biggest thing that's coming in with covid today which is the variant of coronavirus that they have found in the uk I would like to know what exactly is happening with this variant. How is it impacting the body? And you know, what are the biggest fears right now? What are the what are the effects of that on the person? Remember, uh, in in UK, this mutated variant of COVID nineteen was discovered. So this new strain of virus is 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 called uh, all mutated virus, mutated COVID nineteen. Uh, as far as uh, the United States goes. And, and, and this, this new strain is more infectious, but not necessarily gives uh, more illness. So that's a very good news. We know that COVID-19 virus is going to mutate. I think it, it took at least nine, 10 months to mutate or, or a year to mutate. Uh, and I think mutation is, is definitely a, a, a common uh, in, in all kind of virus. So mutating COVID-19 virus, this was expected in the US. We, what we need to do is follow the recommendation of public health officials, avoid travel, large gatherings, facial masks. If we do that, it doesn't matter if you if you have the new strain in the US or not, you will definitely protect yourself. And 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 the, the vaccine, most likely the same vaccine will be effective for the for the mutated variant of this COVID-19 as well.
You know, many you know, countries many, many. around Europe has uh, they have banned travel from the UK into their countries. It hasn't happened in the US yet. There are many flights that are going from London to JFK in New York. Um, how are you looking at this whole situation? Do you really think that we will have this new strain here as well? Already, in my opinion, it, it's already here because uh, the travel from the UK has been going on in this in, in the US right. uh, for for a few months now, uh, and 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 the strain is here already. Uh, it is matter of time, uh, and 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 that is the whole reason. Uh, my request to to all of the the viewers that hey, if you have the vaccine available, take it right away. Follow the guidelines. And, and I think one thing U.S. needs to do is before someone is boarded the flight from the U.K., they must have a negative test. If, if we do that, I think we can definitely avoid more cases in this country. Could uh, yeah. Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine be used to um, help with this new strain? And also AstraZeneca has come out and said that this, their vaccine could be effective against the new COVID strain. Your comments? Vaccines definitely uh, will work on the new strain because uh, the latest mRNA technology has definitely covered many variants of this COVID-19 based on the studies happening last nine months. So uh, I think my answer is yes, definitely the vaccine will be effective for the new uh, mutated variant as well. They're also, also saying, saying that saying children that is- may be more at risk for this uh, strain of COVID-19 or the coronavirus. Um, and again, I asked the question about main, how are we going to make sure that the kids are safe? Your comments on that? Kids has to wait under 16. They have to wait until the additional uh, research and the studies are completed by the CDC, FDA and NIH. Uh, until we have the green signal from, from them, children under 16, they must protect themselves by following the public health uh, officials guideline right now hmm. and, and avoid public places if at all possible. Definitely. You know, when you're looking at the the government right now and we're looking at the new administration coming in very soon next month, what do you think they need to focus on exactly when they're looking at COVID-19, say on January 20th when President-elect Joe Biden is sworn in? So January 20th, the new administration needs to focus on the vaccine distribution. We need to ramp up the, the production. We need to ensure that the vaccinations are reached to all the categories of people in this country and, and, and contact tracing. I think testing is still very, very important. Mm. Uh, we need to do more testing, isolate people. We need to quarantine people, reduce the spread. If we do all this together, I think all those measures definitely will help reduce the spread and mitigate the disease. What's your, What's prediction, your prediction for the next four or five weeks? Um, and predict- that is looking at if in case nobody follows these rules as we keep, continue to see people not adhering to these guidelines. If that happens, what's your prediction? Be very grim in my opinion by January 15th. We will have more, more cases in this country, more deaths in this country. I, I suspect probably more than 100,000 people will die between now and end of March because the, uh, we, we fail to follow the public health officials guideline. If, if, we, if we do uh, follow the guidelines, definitely we can save some lives. But I, I see uh, people are traveling freely. Mm. They are traveling in the airlines. They're taking the trips. They're make, they, they doing the parties at, at the families, gatherings at the families. I think those, those must, be, must be stopped. I just have two more questions left for you here. You know, I would like to know how you're looking at South Asians at high risk. I ask this question to you pretty much every time. And, you know, the answer keeps on changing because it seems like the risk keeps on getting higher and higher. But when you're looking at people with diabetes, heart conditions, lung conditions uh, that are South Asians, how worried should they be right now with such a surge in cases? Sincere request and recommendation to those individuals who are 65 and older with chronic medical conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, asthma, they need to stay put, they need to stay home, they don't have to go anywhere 
just avoid travel large gatherings indoor family gatherings uh, just just stay put for now just take some precautions uh, just like they used to do uh, six months ago and if, if they do that for next two to three months and get the vaccination get themselves safe then uh, they are safe but right now i think they are at highest risk in my opinion oh, south asian as well that is very, very concerning. You know, we just hope here everything goes well. My last question to you is, I would love for you to give a message out to the healthcare workers and medical workers that are working tirelessly every single day to save lives. Hats off to all my healthcare professionals, frontline workers, doctors, nurses, uh, physician assistants, uh, all, all the paramedical staff who works in the hospital, all the frontline workers, the law enforcement, the firefighters, the grocery worker. Uh, hats off to them. They, they have been tirelessly working for almost nine, ten months now, day in and day out. And I, God bless them, uh, give them, God give them strength. To, to serve our country, serve our, our communities, and, and, and my, my blessings for them that they, they stay safe.